Well, you know, I'd say this is the first podcast, but it's not. That's that's total bollocks. It's the second one, but the first one's probably never going to see the light of day because it was wank. Yeah, we royally fucked it, didn't we? I was going through the edit, royally. and I've never been. Yeah, I've never been more depressed in my entire life. I began to hate myself so much. I mean, I thought I was quite good. I'm not going to lie. I'm you didn't even watch it back. You, well, you didn't give me access. I think you were shit and I was brilliant. And then you've just gone, ah, I can't show in this. Your your mic was probably the quietest thing in the world. I kept looking. Liverpool was on in the back. I was sat near the TV. Liverpool was on in the background. So I was like watching off screen for the majority of the, of the call. I kept saying mm. obviously to things that aren't obvious. Um, but this is uh, not two not so good friends. Two not so good friends. And this is literally what it says on the tin. We are two friends. We have been for a very long time. I think I, think I was, I want to say six or seven when I first saw you. We went all the way through the school tier system and yeah, back so in Stoke. It's, years. Yeah, back in Stoke, it's still in like the 1930s. So it's first school, middle school and high school and then yeah. sixth form. And then, so over 20 years of knowing each other, yet I haven't met his second child. I forgot <laughs> it was his first child's birthday the other day. Yeah, we're not very good friends, even though we've been friends for tw- over 20 years. So... And the name. And it's not original. Um, you totally did steal it from Ramesh and Tom Davis. Davies or yeah. Davis? Uh, one of the two. Um, but no, really? I was listening to them. They just chat shit, so I thought, well, we could do that. Two boys, friends that were wild, pretending they're close. Didn't now, so they put time aside once a week to spend some time chatting. This is two not so good friends. Um, so the news. We're getting topical, baby. Give me that news, I gotta know it. We're getting topical, baby. Give me that news, I gotta know it. You'll bring in the news topics this week. I, I do have some news. I do have some news. EA has ended their partnership with FIFA. So does that mean they're going to be basically pro-evolution? Does that mean FIFA is now going to have, like, Manchester Reds and Manchester Blues and all that crap? I, I really don't have a clue. I think it basically means that FIFA are just going to find another sort of gaming provider, I suppose. Um, but it's been EA since, like, forever. Oh, my, okay, I get it, right. So they, Do you understand? That's so yeah. weird. Yeah, I think EA got a bit um, bit greedy. Or FIFA got, one of the two got a bit greedy. In terms it's of not like, like FIFA to get greedy. Figures. It's not like FIFA. Uh, I, think, I think FIFA were the ones that got greedy. I don't believe it. Reading this. Oh, this is it. Yeah, so it says FIFA was seeking at least double the $150 million it gets annually from EA Sports. Oh, we care so about that. So EA fans. pay for the rights. FIFA wanted double what they were getting. They're being greedy. The game, to be honest, has fallen on its horse anyway for the last couple of years. I used to buy it religiously, like on the day of release. And I think it was like FIFA 17. I got it. I was like, God, this is so wank. I really haven't played it since, to be honest. The last FIFA um, I got, I think, was 2012. You've never been a big gamer guy, though, have you? No, but I always got I always got FIFA and I always played FIFA. But, like, I remember at uni... I'd play it because other people had it. And I just remember the new ones always being progressively worse. Like, everything yeah. about it was just worse. It's probably a blessing in disguise, let's be honest. It was on its arse anyway. Um, that is some big news. That's a lot of YouTubers' careers down the pan, isn't it? Because FIFA Ultimate Team, like, yeah, drove a yeah, they're, lot. They're, they'll be they'll be worried about that. And uh, to be honest, I, I'm a bit like, well, I'm glad I don't play it anymore. Because I think there's, there's people genuinely live for this game. And they're going to be like, what do I do yeah. in September what, when the game's your, like, to come out? What is your ultimate FIFA memory? Uh, FIFA 2004. Uh, gigs on the cover. T- Thierry Henry on the Ooh. cover as well. Thierry Henry on the cover as well. And Edgar Davids, two Bellens and Henry. Yeah. And then you had, I, th- I just distinctly remember the playlist, like the music for that game being the best. Oh, wasn't that like um, Jerk It Out and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It was just proper vibey. I, I loved it. That was probably my favourite FIFA. Yeah, 2004. I remember banging in free kicks with Okocha on 04 in my nan's back room. But my yeah. main vibe is probably, I think it was like FIFA 2008 because I was ill for like a weekend. And I literally just did like, I took hearts to like European glory in the space of like <laughs> and at night. Yeah. And it was just, I was total scum for like 36 hours. It was wonderful. Yeah, I believe you. And 08 as well was where the game changed because then it came out on PS3. So then the graphics and everything just got that much better. And it was like, 
a better game for it. But that was a PSP era as well, wasn't it? Uh, PSP was a bit before that, I think. Was it? Possibly. I think it's still going, but I, don't, I think it definitely, like, it was already on on previous games. I PSP think. was really... I bit my PSP out of anger many times and cracked the screen. Bit it? Yeah, I bit it, yeah. I was a very angry child when it came to FIFA. Oh, God. I remember we got to the, I was at, we got to the Colin Cup final and I, I had Smith in the starting lineup, Alan Smith for United. I think I signed him for Vale, actually. And he missed a sitter and I was, I was fuming. I, yeah. I, it does not work anymore. Oh, yeah. It's a new segment. What are they talking about now? It's your idea, this one as well, which I'm not super happy about. Yeah, I mean, I, I know we both suffered with this in the past. You say Quite suffered as if it's like past tense. It's like very much, you sent me a voicemail at voice, voice message, <laughs> and you like, I think, shaw, shaw tick last weekend. <laughs> I did, yeah. I, I mean, thought it was going to be me... like about this. I was going to be like, I've got a really good idea. So I, it was like first thing in the morning and it was that. And I was like, brilliant. You know, just just for the, the, the viewers and the listeners, I'm going to play this out loud now. Was that an actual fart? The reason for that, and it wasn't just me being completely oh, there was, crude. It was, there was rationale behind it. There was rationale behind it. And it a lad at work told me about this WhatsApp group he's in. And basically, there's like over 100 people in this WhatsApp group. There are like two or three rules. Basically, all you can do is send voice notes of you farting. And you're not allowed to like text in it. You're not allowed to send emojis. You're not allowed to respond to anything. It's literally just message after, sorry, voice note after voice note of farts. I tell you what, he, he played like 10 in a row for me the other day and I was just in stitches because of all the different noises people were making. And I was That's like, you know what would make this funnier? If someone went, oh God, or oh no, at the end, like they'd followed through. And I thought I'd test it on you. It's genius. It's really clever. I want to be in it. Apparently they're really strict there as well. Like you have to only do that and you have to participate. Anyone not sending anything is out. I love that there's admins going through that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, all yeah, right, it's a big what's, thing. Your, what's your spy story? Go on. So... My spy story is, I, was, I think I was with you. I really struggled with this one. So me and you have always like loved spicy food and we'd always go for like a spice off, even though we know we suffer with it badly afterwards. And even though... Barely even a spice like a KFC Zinger Burger is... I mean, I can hack a bit more than that. You do I... not, you're, not, you're not in a good way after a Zinger Burger. No one's in a good way after a Zinger Burger. No, I mean, on, on the toilet I'm not, but I can hack the spice level. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. talking about spice levels, like where I've suffered eating. So we went to Nando's, I believe. And it was the... I'd never been before. I didn't know the crack with the sauces. I didn't know how hot each one was. I went for medium thinking, I'll be okay. You struggled at medium? I struggled at medium. The you worst part bitch. was... <laughs> the worst part was I ordered the peri peri fries. Yeah. I did not think they'd be hot. Fuck me. I remember distinctly remember finishing my meal and running to the bathroom and doing it and just following through because I was I was in I was sweating. What straight away? Off medium yeah, like, medium Nando's. Yeah, I, I, I suffered with that badly. But the main the main story here it has to be the, the nightclub story for James. Yeah. So I remember the day very vividly. I think vividly is the right word. I remember it well. I was I was a student. I think I was, I was a student, so I didn't have anything to do in the day. And I was out with Ryan, our mutual acquaintance. We uh, we went to KFC, the aforementioned Zinger Burger. And this is this is where the problems lie. So I'd have had the KFC at like two p.m. and then we'd planned to go on a night out in Hanley in our in our local city, and. I could feel my stomach not wonderful, maybe get to six, seven o'clock pre-drinks. I think nothing of it. it. It goes away. So then we're in the taxi and we're on um, High Lane going between Chell and Hanley. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, fuck, this is not good. <laughs> and we're in, we're in the taxi at like 10. So it's not time to go into when I mean, you could go into a club, but it's not time to go into a club. We got dropped off at the top of Hanley and I had to just leave Ryan to pay for the taxi because I just had to bolt uh, I literally had to go like zero to 100 out of the taxi, sprint down the street into the into the nightclub and just straight into the cubicle toilet, into the toilet. So there's, a, there's one cubicle, the door doesn't lock. The the Classically, the floor is just piss sodden, even at 10 when it's like half empty. And yeah, the, there's the, no toilet seats either. There's no toilet seats and the cubicle is about four foot tall. So even sitting down, yeah. you can look over. Now, 
they've got those toilet roll dispensers, right? With where it's got like the hole for the toilet paper, right? Where you rip it. Yeah. But it was it was po- it was there. It was in there, but it just needed some coaxing out, right? So I just let everything go. And I couldn't sit, there was no toilet seat, so I couldn't sit down. So it just went, it went everywhere. And then I was like, I'll get my car keys out to get the toilet paper out. Straight in, push the toilet paper in, no getting that motherfucker back out. Um, so I was there in a situation where I was like, pants around my knees. I had one hand on the door. I had another hand like just free. And like people could like, people, it, was em- it was empty, pretty empty. So people, there wasn't like busy toilets, but if anyone came in, they'd just see me like weirdly squatting over the cubicle. <laughs> Um, so I had a choice to either go like sock hand or don't wipe and waddle upstairs. And I was like, if I waddle upstairs, I'll get shit everywhere and I'll probably stink for the rest of the night. If I use my sock, I rolled up my trousers and had white socks on, right? So it was an integral part of the outfit. So I had to go like hand and because of the, the, the consistency. So hang on for the, for the outfit, you sacrificed wiping properly and using your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, but there's there's a toilet on the bottom floor, a toilet on the top floor, right? So I was like, I'll do that, and I'll run out. And Ryan claims I didn't do this, but I'm pretty sure I fist bumped because he was waiting outside the toilet <laughs> on the bottom floor. I'm pretty sure when I came out, I fist bumped him. I was like, yeah, I'm just going upstairs. And I went upstairs to the toilet, and they had toilet roll there. And then crisis was averted. Well, it wasn't really averted, but crisis was solved. Um, and then I washed my hands, and we had a, a, a good night was had by all. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I ran out of ideas, I hate it. And I hate it, uh, again, like the podcast, does what it says on the bloody tin. And are you doing this? I think it's you this week, isn't it? I think so, but what I'm going to do is go off the cuff here. Um, and this is, more, this is more about my day job. I work on a golf course. Cheshire being Cheshire, they're all cunts. This golf course in particular, there's a few high-profile sort of people there. I, it's it's expensive. I hate it. Absolutely hate it when these people think that they are above you and that they do don't they? have to do they acknowledge do that? you. Absolutely. They think they don't have to acknowledge you. I'm literally spending eight hours a day, five days a week, preparing this golf course for them to make it as immaculate as possible for them to go and hit the ball 20 yards and fuck it, basically. And then they blame me that they're shit at golf. The only time they do speak to me is when they're blaming me that they're shit at golf. They are complete and utter arseholes. Nine out of ten golfers, and this is wherever I've worked on golf courses, they're all pricks. They're all arseholes. Like, they just think, I think there's this thing about golf where people think they're immediately better than you because they play it and they're rich. Like, what what are they gaining by being an arsehole? Especially when that's their downtime. Like, they're going to play golf, that's their relaxation like that's probably why they're so angry because that's their downtime i can't think of anything worse that's like you doing your job and you're editing a video for someone and they don't acknowledge you other than to say it's shit yeah that's basically the industry oh yeah it's a new segment what are they talking about now are you still listening to what they're talking about now i have been trying to key myself up for i'd say about a year now to do this challenge um, I've been trying to rope people into it unsuccessfully. You then came to me with a podcast idea. I then said, okay, we spoke about this last time in the podcast for about 45 minutes. Yeah, it was so I've literally shit. known about this challenge for a week and we start it tomorrow. So it's called um, Hard 75. Mm. Um, and the rules are 75 days, you've got to follow a strict diet. It can be anything you want, but it has to be a diet, no cheat days. You can't drink a drop of alcohol. You've also got to do two... 45 minute workouts a day they've got to be three hours apart from each other oh christ yeah yeah oh, that's, no, the so that's gonna <laughs> that's, so that's, the... gonna, that's, that's gonna fuck me up a bit because i usually go to the gym straight from work now my 45 minutes outdoor because this like 45 minutes has to be indoor 45 outdoor right it's just for it doesn't have to be indoor but 45 has to be outdoor so right, you could do so, two outdoors yeah so my outdoor one i was going to tie in with work because like i said before I did 32,000 steps yesterday. That is more than enough. But is that like a solid, four, is that 45 minutes of solid walking? Oh, it's more like three hours. Okay, right, fine. So there's that. You've also got to read 10 pages of a non-fiction, basically a self-help book mm. um, to better yourself. Um, and you've also got to drink a gallon of water every day. And to top it off, you've got to take a progress photo every single day. The catch is if you miss one of these steps, if you read nine pages of a self-help book and not 10, you have to restart from day one. I uh, went for a I went for a five k run yesterday, 
um, mm. and it was horrible, and it was only twenty five so, minutes. I was going to say so. Yeah, and you've then got, to, you've got to find another twenty minutes worth of exercise there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I was going to do like seven and a half to ten k, but I've gone to football tonight and uh, done my groin, tweaked my hamstring. So, and I've got to be up at six a.m. tomorrow for work. Oh, six a.m. That's a fucking lion. I start <laughs> at five. Yeah, but I've got I've got to go. I've got to get a train like pretty much at heart at six half six. So I'm going to have to get up and do an do an do do an exercise. That's how ready I am. Gonna do an exercise at like probably five. Oh god. So you're gonna have to go for a run before work. I can barely walk at the minute. I'm gonna have to walk. The thing that I'm gonna be a bit skeptical on here is how do we prove what we've done? Like how do I prove to you? We're I've vlogging drank... it, aren't we? We're vlogging it. Yeah, but how do I prove I've drank a gallon of well, water? I can't you have to just myself. not be a little shithead, don't you? You just have to do it. Yeah. How long do you realistically think you are gonna last? I'd I'd take thirty days. Now, like if someone said like thirty days, I'd take that. I'd take a month of doing this. I I really would because seventy five days is like elite. I feel I feel like not many people do this challenge all the way through. I am um I think I'll do the seventy five, and if the only reason I don't won't do the seventy five is by something probably stupid like forgetting to take a progress photo or like you know yeah. cocking up on the pages or something. That's the apart from the obvious cock ups that can happen yeah i mean and that's happened like you've read some things online where people have, like started again after day 36 the worst part was the per so the guy who does this like came up part 75 he's really strict with the rules and the rules are only water not cordial only water and someone got to like day 35 but they were putting cordial into their gallon of water so they had to yeah, it's i mean could, could we twist the rules a little bit to no. suit us for our let's say it has to be that challenge we yeah. can't twist it oh god can we drink anything else on top of the gallon yeah but would you would you want to no i just mean that i'd say in the morning if i had a cup of tea the the problem with me is i i drink like a lot of um fizzy drinks and stuff mainly for the yeah. flavor i like a bit of flavor when i'm having a drink or a cup of tea in the morning or whatever so if i'm just getting up and having a glass of water I'm going to feel so depressed. No, I mean, you can. You can drink whatever you want as long as you do the gallon of water. I can't but, drink alcohol, though. Yeah, yeah, you can't drink booze. That's the only, that's the, that's the only like, I'll drink rule. You just can't drink the booze, but you can go nuts if you want to, you know, if you want to. But I just don't think it's so, like I'm doing half a gallon this uh, a day at the minute. And that's a fucking task. Like, that's difficult. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it is. No. It is. It's <laughs> horrendous. It's it so though? good for you, but it's horrendous. Is it? Though? It's also not that bloody good for you because it's the tap water is filled with microplastic, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Maybe in London. No, everywhere. You, nah, it's you can't drink here. bottled water anymore because of the plastic. Mm. You can't drink tap. Well, you can you can drink it, but I mean, it's just bad for you. Did you not see that news story the other day where they were like, we found microplastics in a blood sample? Christ. It's a very quick break for a hot take. It's a very quick break for a hot take. What, what are your feelings on climate change? Uh, bad. That was a break for a hot take. That was a break for a hot take. Well, and hitting them hard takes us on to the next part very nicely. Um, playing against a former Premier League professional footballer, I'll have you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we've both done this, and I, I must say, at the time, they weren't a professional Premier League footballer. They were probably the best part of professional. They were definitely they were semi-professional. They were playing in the academy. They were no, they, they were, were they were fully professional because he he was sponsored, wasn't he? He was playing in the academy. Yeah, yeah. basically so didn't have to do anything school wise because he was just going to be minted. Yeah, I mean, he was in the Manchester United academy. Um, that was Port Vale star striker. Yeah, James Wilson. He actually is Port Vale star striker as well. To be fair to him, yeah. And to be to be honest, I I mean I never liked the guy in school. I always thought he had a bit of arrogance about him, especially uh, on the football pitch. Yes. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. I just thought I. I don't know. It's not in my nature to be arrogant like that. If I was that good at something, I don't think I'd be arrogant about it. Yeah, but you're not good at anything, so you don't know. Well, no. Yeah, true. If you're good I at mean... something, you would be big balls about it. If I could, yeah. if I could smash a. a 
a ball in the top bins from the halfway line, like just like it was nothing, I'd be a dick. Yeah, I believe that. But I don't think I would be. <laughs> you would be. I don't know if I would though. You scored a goal. Not, you put a this cross is where in. The not so good friends comes in. You put a cross in about twenty, about fifteen years ago on a Sunday league match, and you've not shut up about it since. Yeah, because be it was dick. against you. you because be it was against you. Anyway, because it was against you. We played football against professional footballer, former Premier League professional footballer, and potentially future Premier League footballer, although highly, highly unlikely. So anyway, your experience of playing against a former Premier League footballer was. Dot, dot, dot. It was awful. I mean, <laughs> I I wasn't slow in school. Like, I think that's fair to say. I was quite a good runner. And the guy was just like twice as fast. It was ridiculous. I could not get near him. And was I tried fast? to hurt He was fast, yeah. I tried to hurt him. I couldn't get near him. I didn't know um, how fast he was. He was in my back pocket for most of the game. So I didn't <laughs> see him run. Fuck off. Fuck off. No, but seriously, like... He'd run at you, and he'd just do a little jink, and he'd go past you like you were nothing. And by the time you've turned round, the ball's already like rolling out of the back of the net. The ge- the keeper's like bending over. Do you not think that's it. like if you were that good at football, like you know when like I'd say our level of football is okay. When you're playing against like really bad people, like people that aren't very good at football, it's bored. You must be bored. You must be bored if you can just do a little like jink and take it past like it's if you're not yeah, there. He must I mean, be bored because he, he knows he can do it. Yeah, I don't know if he was bored because they because of the way our school was laid out with the AstroTurf and how many people used to sort of used to crowd around the outside and watch, especially if it was like form football or something. I would say that my uh, experience of playing against Premier League, ex-Premier League footballer James Wilson was fantastic. Was it though? Because yeah. like you're saying you had him in your back pocket. I, I know you were a good defender and I'm not discrediting you for that. You, you were a very good defender. All right, granted, he had a bad ankle and he was playing in nets. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, it went, so, so there's about, it was form football. Do you know, the, like, the, the lunchtime thing that they yeah. did in, in state form? Basically, it was, I think it was, like, early on in that, that tournament. And he, um, he was fucked. His, his ankle was basically just not, not there. And there was, was only two. Was he on two... crutches? He had a cast I do on. remember. A a t- I on. do. I do remember a time where he was actually in school on crutches. Was it then? No, it wasn't then. I think it was him coming back from that. It oh, must have been. Fuck's sake! And you're saying but, you had him in your back well, pocket. There was three or four of us on our team, and two of them on theirs. And obviously, he couldn't. Like, they took the kick off. The the other kid rolled it back to him. He just pinged it top corner, scored straight away. <laughs> and I was like, brilliant. Then he retreated back into goals. Um, and I just remember carrying the ball, pushed myself wide to the right. And just let it let it fly, and it was a scree. I honestly like miss hit it, scuffed it. <laughs> he rolled, but he was. I must have. I must have given him the eyes somehow. I must have a lazy eye or something because he was going. <laughs> he was going to the near post, and by the time he'd realised it was going to the far post, his little dodgy like paper ankle just obviously wasn't getting him back over there. So it went in screamer. I mean, you know what? I know exactly what's happened there. He's he's thinking, any any footballer worth is. With his talent here, we put it in the near post. <laughs> I'll cover that one off. <laughs> and that put the score back to 7 1. You've scuffed it and it's rolled in the wrong corner. <laughs> he's too unfit to get over to. <laughs> and you're saying he's in your back pocket. All right, fair play. At least I was honest about my story. I scored past a Premier League footballer. Oh, Granted, he's a striker and he's playing in net with a bad ankle, but you can only beat what's in front of you. But so I would say, you know, I'm sticking with the fact that I played very well, had him in the back pocket. Yes, he's getting paid to play football handsomely. Um, but who's the real winner? It's him. It's still him. But I still yeah. go past him. He's got, you know, so. Yeah, he's, he's definitely the winner. He's, 100% yeah. he's the winner. Uh, fair play what? to him. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah fair. You know, fair play. It must have been a bit of graft to get where he is. And I hope he's still not thinking about that goal because I don't complain of mind. Do the usual things. Look, I guess subscribe. Be cool if you like the video. Come back yeah. again. Watch yeah. more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know do. what as well? If you've got a friend who you really don't like and you want to make them suffer for about 45 minutes, send them the link. Yeah, they should. we should work. And this could be taken to Dragon's Den. A URL link that you send that when it opens, you can't close it. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
I mean, illegal, probably. Ah, oh, super illegal, yeah. But we'll do it. But imagine that. Yeah. Like, you could just spam it. Because if you message your mates, I mean, you could only do it once, but you could have, like, one podcast which gets, like, I don't know, how many mates we got? Like, we get, like, five views. We could have yeah, one I mean, podcast. I've got a gets, solid like... two friends. Well, uh, you know. Bye. Well, you, you, you know, we're, we're going to be on the, the old YouTube. This is probably where you're watching us right now. But um, we're also going to have a TikTok. For yeah, the, 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 I'll put the links know, everywhere. The, the decent, the decent little clips that have happened here. The little, the little jewels. Yeah, the little zingers. Oh, don't the talk about zingers. zingers. Don't talk about zingers. Ooh. Oh. And then after section one. Two boys, friends for a while, pretending they're close. Didn't now, so they put time aside once a week to spend some time chatting. This is two not so good friends.